All right, check this out. Here we have the Asus Zephyrus G15 with an 8-core Ryzen 5900HS in 80 watt 3070 and a 165Hz Quad HD display. This video will demonstrate thermal performance when a glitch happens and the GP will only boost to 55 watts. A reboot fixes this should this happen to you. The reason I bring this up is to enlighten your knowledge on the effect GPU wattage has on CPU thermals. Most laptops share the same cooler across their CPU and GPU. This is because the CPU tends to have several power limits, one of which allows the CPU to pull a higher wattage when it's loaded by itself. This wouldn't thermally work if the CPU did not have access to the GPU side of the cooling solution. Now what this means from a gaming standpoint is that the heat produced from the graphics card at load will affect the thermals of the CPU and vice versa. As you can see here, CPU thermal performance is legendary when the GPU is pulling only 55 watts instead of the 80 watt plus it normally pulls. This is also why I have featured GPU undervolting guides on Bob of All Trades using the MSI Voltage Curve Editor to help mitigate high CPU temps even if the graphics card is running cool. However, with the addition of NVIDIA's Dynamic Boost, undervolting the GPU is not a feasible solution as Dynamic Boost overrides any setting you select. Technically, you are supposed to be able to turn off Dynamic Boost in the NVIDIA control panel, but that setting comes and goes. It's weird, and I don't know how else to explain it. Hopefully in a few months, this will be addressed and we can go back to undervolting the GPU to assist in heat reduction of the associated CPU. Regardless, your understanding of how GPU wattage and heat affect CPU thermals will go a long way to further enhance your expectations of thermal performance on any given gaming laptop.